The stage for the 2020 presidential race has officially been set, with Joe Biden clinching the Democratic presidential nomination over the weekend. Biden scored more than the 1,991 delegates he needed to win the nomination, kicking off the start to the general election in November. For more on this, Joel Payne joins me from Washington. He's a Democratic strategist and CBS News contributor. Welcome, Joel. Great to have you with us. So, former Vice President Biden is expected to meet with George Floyd's family privately today, ahead of the burial tomorrow. How do you think that Floyd's death and the resulting protests across the country will shape the general election in November? Well, look, this is certainly a flashpoint around race. And we know that the former vice president has been very deliberate in his attempts to reach out to the Floyd family. Um, we know the president reached out to the Floyd family, but that didn't go too well. And I think what Joe Biden has to do here is a delicate balance of being respectful of the family's wishes, being respectful of the life of George Floyd, but also framing this into an issue that is going to galvanize the, the support of those who are out in, out in the streets protesting and um, the, the, the unrest that we've seen over the last 10 days related to the killing of George Floyd. You know, Joe Biden has to meet a cultural problem with the political solution. That's a challenge that he has right now. And Joel, now that Biden has clinched the nomination, the focus is going to be on his VP choice. Do we know if his shortlist has been whittled down at all? And who are the folks emerging as real contenders in the wake of the coronavirus and the nationwide demonstrations? Well, Tanya, I'm sure you saw that political piece today that talked about how the current moment has really shaken up that vice president search process inside the Biden campaign. Two names that have been elevated are Val Demings, and um, who's the, obviously a congresswoman from Florida, and Atlanta, Georgia Mayor, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. And, you know, Mayor Bottoms here is probably the newest name to what I would call the upper tier. I think uh, Congresswoman Demings has always been on the radar of those who have been watching this process. But Mayor Bottoms, mostly due to her response to the unrest in Atlanta, has really elevated herself. And I think it's, it's pretty clear now that the Biden team is under a lot of pressure to name a woman of color. Obviously, the former vice president has already said he'll name a woman. There are a number of qualified, high-level women of color. And I think in this moment, I think that the, the former vice president will see, again, that political challenge to this cultural problem. He'll see that choosing a vice president that represents the black community will help him bridge that divide. So I want to ask you about former National Security Advisor Colin Powell. Um, as I'm sure you saw over the weekend, he voiced his support for Joe Biden. So can we expect more prominent Republicans? Because it doesn't get you know, much more prominent than that in terms of you know, Republican uh, history. He served on, uh, served on so many Republican administrations. Can we expect more like Colin Powell to endorse Biden? Well, Tanya, what's interesting is he wasn't even the most significant or the kind of largest name Republican to signal either support for Joe Biden or lack of faith in President Trump. Um, as you know, there was a New York Times story last week that suggested that former President George W. Bush was considering uh, supporting Joe Biden and going against Donald Trump this cycle, which would obviously be a big deal. Look, I think that this um, underscores the challenge that a lot of rank-and-file Republicans, who I like to call them sometimes Trumpers, have faced. Yes, they might like some elements of Donald Trump's policy, but they are not comfortable with the, the culture of division and racism that Donald Trump has inspired through his presidency. And this is a pivot moment for the Republican Party. And I think you're going to see a lot of high-profile high Republicans be faced with this choice. Do I go with the party and be, quote, unquote, a party man or a party woman? Or do I blaze my own trail and be a maverick and, and go off on my own? I think we've seen Colin Powell do that. I think you might see others, particularly from that George W. Bush era of Republican politics. All right. Well, Joel Payne, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.